It's the Christmas season, time for family and friends to gather, creating lasting memories for years to come. It's a time when we seem to cherish those relationships just a bit more, and that is no different for those who live and work at the Canadian Forces Base Edmonton. The Canadian Forces are small in comparison to the world's other armed forces, standing at about 67,000 strong, with 26,000 more reservists. These men and women serve on numerous bases across the country. The Edmonton Garrison is located just north of the city, and with all the force members, support staff and families, the military community is just shy of 15,000 people. Lieutenant Colonel Tom Bradley, himself a husband and father of three, is the base commander overseeing operations and personnel. I have roughly 900 people that I work with, and what we do is we provide the support services for all the men and women and the families here of the Edmonton Garrison. So that means we interact with a lot of different people here in the community. We've come a long way in a, in a day and time, and I, I think Canadians in general, you know, there used to be, you have your job and you do your job and your family comes second, to a realization overall that, you know, success and, you know, families require communication. Those who choose to don the Canadian military fatigues and serve their country do not choose an easy life. At the Edmonton Garrison, there is a central place that is a refuge, a place to find peace and spiritual direction to navigate through the many stresses of military life. Pastoral cares about the art of making meaning. So, uh, where are you, why are you here, and how does this help you define who you are? So, much of my day-to-day -day job is helping people go through that. Having the Padres here, for most soldiers, the statistics are high for, uh, for mental stress issues in combat, and you have to heal. And the Padres are an instrumental part of the Canadian Forces. To have people there in the same trenches with you, or in the same desert with you, uh, and to be able to, to have spiritual healing while you're there, then you know that when you come back, the exact same Padre, chances are it's going to be in the same area, or there's at least Padres around you that can help. That's the worst problem for soldiers, is we all think we're uh, indestructible supermen and that uh, we don't get faced with those problems. Those problems are, and if people try to bury them. The fact of the matter is they're there uh, and they have to be dealt with. If you don't deal with those problems, then it's gonna come home to my family. Then my children are gonna deal with the repercussions and my wife is gonna deal with the repercussions. Military life creates unique challenges for families, particularly during times of deployment. The spouses, most often women who remain on base, can feel overwhelmed with loneliness and increased responsibilities. Yeah, you just, you have to learn how to be a single parent, I guess, when they're away. You have to know how to do everything on your own because for lots of times you have to do that, not only when they're, when they're overseas, but they do quite a, a lot of intensive training also before they, the build up that leads to the overseas. So there's months and months of, of um, big chunks of time when they're away. I'd be lying if I'd say it wasn't, wasn't difficult and um, um, lonely at times, but um, I found that this tour um, in 2007 with the, with the children, it was, it was less lonely because you just had to keep things going and uh, for the sake of the children. Support is key in maintaining sanity for families during the flux of separation and coming back together. And that support comes from a number of different places. Well, the Family Resource Centre, Military Family Resource Centre, is, is an amazing uh, resource for families to, um, to keep us connected to the community and, and to our soldiers. Um, they have all sorts of programs, of deployment programs. Um, for me, it was, uh, it was wonderful. They had uh, a childcare program, so once, once a month or several times a month, I could go and drop the kids off and have a half day or a full day to myself, whether it be going shopping or going to get your hair done or those, j just having some me time. Most of the women know each other and that you always have a contact with another female that most likely their husband is away too. So if you don't have close family here, um, there's always somebody on base, whether it be at the gym or at the MFRC, that you can bump into. So the women generally keep in contact a lot. We'll see you after, right? Yes. Well, I think for us, um, we've moved quite a bit over, um, over his military career. And some of the, the biggest things when we move to a new city, it's, it's, it's finding our, our church is one of the first things we do. It's getting our roots and um, because that's the foundation of our family. And uh, once you feel comfortable 
and have your faith, um, just everything else falls into place. Well, oftentimes when you run out of people to call or when it's late at night and you wake up and you're worried, um, it is impossible to have like a physical person there. But faith is instrumental in getting you through those nights and getting you through those days. And I, I have a hard time um, going, you know, any amount of time without talking to Justin. But in those times also, you always have somebody else to talk to. And you always have God to turn to. If a soldier finds that his family is not well supported, he's not going to be as effective. You know, if, if you're in Afghanistan and you're worried about your family, you're worried about your wife, you're worried about your children, you're not focused on your job. And truly, when you're in Afghanistan, I need you, you know, I need you to do your job. You know, your family is there, your family is always with you. They're, they're part of what makes you strong, but you need to be focused on the mission. So what we do is we focus on the families and supporting the families by providing them those services that they need, particularly when they're in times of difficulty. Some of the latest information from Statistics Canada indicates that the divorce rate is falling. Within the military, those numbers seem to be rising with the stresses and separation that come with this life. Marriage is an act of faith, if you think about it. The idea that you would, you would devote your life to one person in that way is in, is in itself, it is an act of faith. By definition, I, I mean, I don't know how people who don't have faith articulate that meaning, but you know, certainly for me, that's, that's, uh, it becomes a defining element of who you are before God. And I tell couples all the time when I'm counseling as a, as a chaplain, the most important thing you're ever going to give your kids is a happy mom and dad. So don't lose sight of that. There's a reason why you have kids, and it's first you loved her. We definitely take time, just us, mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we need to. We need to be, we'll always have each other. Our kids will grow up and move away, and, and I don't want to end up living with a stranger. Mm -hmm. So we always take time mm -hmm. together, even if it's just at the end of the day just lying in bed to talk and share our thoughts with each other. Mm -hmm. We always take that time. With all the latest advances in technology, it has never been easier to stay in contact with one another. And for those in the military, communication is key to keep families and marriages strong, whether a soldier is deployed overseas or right here at home on base. After our uh, last tour in 2007, when I came home, you know, uh, the, the children, you know, it was, it was like I wasn't gone because the children had maintained contact with me. They saw me on the VTC, they, uh, they, we exchanged emails all the time. I do everything possible, especially now that we have children, uh, to make sure that I do my very, very best to try to speak to my children. Every day is not always an option, but the, the most that I possibly can. Oh, Steve's great at it at sending little messages home for the kids. He put together a little, a little story and he'd have little pictures of, of things like this kitten is, is a cat that we found in our camp and we've named him whatever we've named him and, or this is the toilet, this is where we go to the things that the kids would laugh at and be interested in. And yeah, every week he would send maybe two or three pages, yeah. a little story for the kids and my daughter who at the time was in grade four would take them uh, into school and she would read them to the class because there was you and one other dad that were overseas, so they were sort of the adopted dads of the class. So she would read and share everything with the class. and She was just so proud mm -hmm. that you were over there. Okay. She was. She was sad, but she wrote a letter to him and said, uh, yeah. I'm really sad that you're away, but I, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm more proud. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's fine. He's away a lot, and um, but you know what? I think that with him being away as much as he has been, it's just you appreciate one another that much more, and uh, the time that you have together is just that much more special. Yeah. So you may miss a birthday, you may miss Christmas, and all the special occasions, but you just make the most of the time that you you have. We stick by each other's side no matter what, and as long as we stick together, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what we face. So. Mm. <laughs>